all right finally uh, so in this course we are going to look at elixir again but starting with the basics and only the basics i have created a lot of course where we create elixir projects like graphql api rest api um, real time chat uh, whatever but i wanted to you know make a course or make a series where we you know try to look at how a beginner would uh, want to learn elixir right so i i, I kept this course uh, hidden up till now but uh, i think it's time i released it so here it is so the main purpose of this course is just to explore the elixir fundamentals right basics data types and all the good stuff elixir offers must like uh, any any language you start to learn you learn these things right so same with elixir right nothing rocket science so yeah and the first uh, talking about the sections uh, there aren't many sections like uh, i have created divided the uh, i think i have included all the lectures in one section only because my courses are based on hands on coding i don't need slides and stuff and i think that's my style so the topics we will cover if you are very brand new to elixir you will not understand much of it in this video and you will understand that when you progress in the course but let me explain you so this the first will be we will be doing most of it in iex shell which is basically like if you know of course you should know i am assuming that you know some basics of another language not elixir you don't need to know elixir but you know something about nodejs or java or perhaps whatever your python cpp or whatever so first of all we will be having the iex shell overview which is basically the shell or repl right where you can play with elixir but it's much cooler than that in nodejs repl you can do 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 or whatever right so it will help you with this elixir iex shell it will help you compile recompile like without killing the shell and you know starting it again and uh, recompiling the code calling the functions of your calling them uh, you know let's say you wrote some module or functions in the code base right you can run that in the ie shell only right no need to start the server or whatever right and yeah so and then we will uh, dive into the basics data types and operations arithmetic all all of this in ie shell and we will look at list keyword list map enum spread matching if else statements and then case statements then condition then with block right then pipe operator which these are pretty you know native to elixir ecosystem or erlang ecosystem then functions a normal but function guards is what elixir offers string date time we will take a look at these also but uh, strings we will cover most of the strings in the previous lectures because anyway we are processing strings and using it everywhere so yeah i think that's the basic idea of this course and it's pretty hands on just like any other course we will be writing not much of code just exploring in the shell i it's my first beginner friendly course but i try to keep it as simple as possible and not uh, teaching or talking about the hard things or unnecessary things uh, the idea is to if you you know learn from this course the main idea was to you know just uh, you to get you started with elixir then you can move on to my other courses where i always say that i am assuming that you know elixir now you know elixir right and we start with the phoenix project and spin up the command and stuff i might i might create a course on phoenix as well because without phoenix we, we cannot create apis and stuff and all that cool stuff that elixir offers right but uh, yeah this course is for very beginner who don't know shit about elixir right so to get you started and in the future i'm planning part 2 or part 3 of this course let's say the tooling the mix and stuff and uh, of course the concurrency i i would like to create a separate course on otp and concurrency for this but uh, that that's for educational purposes main, mainly if you want to get started with elixir and build projects then this course to get you familiar with the functional programming and foreign syntax this language offers other than node js or class based java programs right and then we will talk about the roadmap after this in the outro right
cool thank you see you again in the course all right so let's start so presumably you have already installed elixir in your system so just let's just go to the IE shell right and this is more like a rappel like node.js has and many of the languages so if you do one plus one it will spit out too right so this is the IX shell and now uh, let's start from the beginning I guess so I already showed you one plus two right so you can do arithmetic operations here one plus two whatever and what else Hmm. So let's start with the basic data types, right? So 255, of course, integers, floats, and floats have, you know, you have to suffix or prefix with a number. You cannot write like this is not valid. 0.585, you have to prefix it to zero or whatever, right? And booleans, of course false and note that every every value in elixir is you know truthy except false and nil right nil so everything else is truthy so and next atom so atoms are basically constants and whose name is the actual value of it which means that this atom you know this is the atom right uh true true and false are also atoms which means this is true and this is false this is basically this is how you write the atoms and the value of the atom is false right Before, uh, after the colon so if you do uh, first let's compare two numbers like this so it says true right so now if I compare true to true it says true right because like I said true and false true and false are also atoms that's why it it's written in true next yeah so we can we also have the function is atom in elixir which we can pass the true for example this is not an atom this is the boolean type and it's written in true because underlying it's also an atom but if we pass two it's not it doesn't say true right so and what else the name of the modules are also atoms in Elixir basically uh, like this so you write the module right like this right so if we can go to this so this is the module name right so first dose this is also an atom right and it is atom will return true even if the module is not declared so we can pass I have whatever the app name is and we can pass like first those and this will return true right and, <coughs> and I presume that uh, modules are declared with caps if I do this it isn't saying no such import no such variable right and if I do capital F and it basically means the uh, it's a module right that's that some insight and of course elixir has strings in double quotes right and of course you can compare strings with like this this and of course for comparison it, we also have like javascript triple equal to which means you want to compare 2.31 with 2 it will return false but if you want to compare 2.0 to 2 it will return true but if you want to compare strictly integer and floats so you will use 3 equal to and it will return false right cool uh, what else arithmetic operations I already told you 2 plus 2 3 plus sorry oops 3 plus 45 48 and what else we have division 2.0 and by default the division returns the float and hmm, what else 
and if you want the if you want to get the integer return and we will use this div function in Alexa 10 5 boom two. and it, it returned 2 unlike this which return floats right and what else we want the modulo like the remainder so we can do we will use ram and the first argument will be the 10 and we are dividing it at 2 so remainder is 0 because 5 cancel out 10 on the multiples of 2 I right? hope you understood that of course we have ternary operators uh, and stuff not ternary operators logical operators which means that true and then false right like other languages I'm not gonna you know deep dive into this this is just basic stuff we are just exploring all this basic stuff in Alexa style and if we do false or, or true so this will return true why because this and and returns uh, if both of them are true both the conditions are true then it returns true and it will stop if the first condition is false right process by elimination and then the R operator returns if any of the conditions are true so it will return true if the first condition is true if it's false then only it will check the another one right many of you wouldn't know this I think and what else yeah so we also have not equal to so 4 is not equal to 4 false and I like to space this out and 4 is equal to 4 which already covered true right and what else so comparisons we did of course we can compare like this 4 is greater than equal to 5 4 right basic stuff uh, so we also have 3 operators which are basically and or and not right so this is a comment that's why it's returning nil so uh, and when using these operators the first argument will be boolean always so we can do true and four of course it's true then it's returning four and if you do false it, it returns false because and is like true is true first argument will be boolean and if that's true then it will return the right value the second value and we also have or so this returns 4 because false first value is false so it's returning it's returning true if the first uh, sorry 4 and if the first value is true then it will return true right just like <gasps> this puppy sorry about that right and what else so we also have not this is basically not false will return true not true will return to false and like I said not will have the argument only boolean if you do this it will error out comparisons with it sorting and stuff so basically uh, just to keep things in sync and an important feature of Alexa is that any two type can be compared this is particularly useful in sorting we don't need to memorize it for blah 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 so basically what this means is all this can be compared and the highest priority of the comparison will be the bridge string then the list then the map and the last is the number so let's say let's try it i've never tried it out so if we compare string with number it's running through oh damn it's true cool but what will we do with this knowledge we'll see uh what else string interpolation of course uh, let's declare a variable called username and let's do this hack and if you want to use this variable in a string so hello and javascript has this elixir has this right hash username hello hack cool string concatenation uh, you can combine strings like we already have the variable username right and so what do we do we need to combine the last name for it so let's create a new variable last name like this so if you do this username and this is how you can concatenate the strings last name 
and let's store it in the result variable and let's print out the result variable hack oops cool and of course you can also print out like this io.puts hello and string concatenation and result cool hello hack oops cool and of course this returns a tuple of ok sorry atom of ok after printing out whatever stuff we asked it to print out cool i think that's it for this lesson let's move on to the next one okay let's continue uh, now we have lists so lists are basically arrays in your own terms so basically that's how you define a list and it can have different types of elements also in the list and say it is and whatever it's we have also atoms right so this is a valid list and elixir implements list in the linked list way of course you know about linked list rather the dsa folks and which means that when you you know operate on linked list we have a tail and we have a head right so the operations on the you know last element will be the much greater because it will have to traverse the whole list because nothing is it's not index based right uh, this is more related to the linked list part go and read about linked list then you will understand so basically if you work on the head part or the first element when you're trying to you know add a new element in all other languages we do array dot push but now here we should do uh, not not just you know shift which javascript has don't get confused so basically the idea is when you want to add the element to the list add that on the beginning it will be more efficient than adding that into the last bit why because this is a linked list it's not index based that you can do like array and the array dot length and this will be the last index and stuff you you because linked lists are not index based cool so what i was saying if you want to add something try to add that on the first part so let's create a list so that i don't have to write this again and again so hello 2.22 and show so we have a list and now we have to add the element to the list let's say world so you can add that at the last like uh, this this is how you add two lists so you can create another list with the elements inside it so let's say this and if you print list it will have hello world sorry i didn't reassign it right so hello uh, and the worlds we added it to the last now we want to add something at the top like i said it's more efficient so we can add it like uh, uh, so i did explain you guys what i did here this is basically this is how you add two lists in a list so i created another list with the element and just appended the list plus plus with the elixir operator so next uh, we want to let's say add a new element to the list so what we do we have the list we created a list a new list and we you know post our list or you know put put our list uh, into this and now we can use the type symbol this is basically you know just like you know the spread of it and something so inside the list we have a list and if we print this we will have the nested list but if we do this right so and this false so we basically added the false inside the list at the head using this syntax and this pipe symbol we will learn more about that but basically what this did uh, you will get to know uh, just give me a second let me come to head and tail I will explain it. and also we just for your insights but this is an elixir operator and this is basically called arity or whatever uh, how do you pronounce it I don't know so 
this means that this is elixir operator which takes two arguments right so slash two means number of arguments cool number of arguments. and plus plus operator which adds values cool next uh, we also have list subtraction which is basically we have the list here so let's give new list and we can subtract we can add some duplicate values in it so 3.3 and false so we can list new list list minus minus new list and note that we have very interesting results here hello was you know gone but 2.2 .2, sorry 3 remain why because we have we subtracted this is the new list right so we subtracted from the list so this is the output of the list this list not this list right just like we subtract 10 minus 2 it will return out 8 the output or the remaining value of the first right so this is the list and we all have three know that three didn't deduct out if it would have been 3.0 it would not deduct out because uh, the minus minus operator checks strictly which means you have to use just like using triple equal to 2.0 is not equal to 2 right that's why so it would, would have been 3.0 then only even then three would remain the same so this uh, yeah hello was gone and note that uh, if you have duplicates let's say let's not create a reverse now so we have true we have some variable let's say right and and we have some duplicates right so Let's say we have two duplicates, so the first occurrence will be gone. So the output will be hello, and this is this after hello, right? So first occurrence will be gone by subtracting with the duplicates. Cool. Next is head and tail. So we have two functions which are basically get the head and tail. So this is our list. So we have HD and we pass the list, or we can do this. HD, I guess, and we pass our one list and we get the head, which is the hello. And we have tail, which is TL, and we have the list, so we get the tail. Tail is basically the remaining list after neglecting the first element, so that's why it's giving us the list. And the HD is the head, which is the hello, right? And what else? Yeah, we can also pattern match pattern matches yeah that's the stuff i was talking about when when i used something like new element to a list right so this is this is pattern matching what this means is if you have the list right and we want to pattern match the hello and the rest of the things so we do this you pattern match the first variable which is the first value and the rest just like you know object destructuring in javascript i'll show you it agree so now the first variable will be hello and the rest is the rest of the list yes so we are pattern matching from the list and this is the first variable and this is the rest of the list just like you know object destructuring and stuff Next, we have tuples, I guess. So tuples are basically you know, similar to list, but they are stored in con you know, contiguously in the memory. Contiguously basically means the docs are confusing. It basically means that they are st stored at one place in the memory, which means if they are stored, assigning them is easy, right? But if you need to modify them, that is expensive because they are stored somewhere in the memory and now you need to decrease or increase the size and depending on that they will be you know reallocated to a different memory with a you know 
space according to needs and this will be more like yeah. inexpensive sorry expensive because they are sitting somewhere like there's a gap and they are sitting somewhere right and there's a limit space and other people are using the space around it like this space right like this and some this space right and so this is available this is a tuple right presume and this is the movie so hello is here and if you want to add another l to this right so we cannot add because there is no space because everyone is there and the space is here so what will happen is hello will be deleted and it will be reassigned a new memory with a new L. That's why it's expensive. Hope you understood. Cool. Next, uh, sorry, I was talking about tuples. Tuples. Right. So, how do you declare a tuple? Basically, curly brackets. And of course, different types. And these are basically used as a convention for the different types of the functions. Let's say you declare a function, you define a function, and of course, in let's say it's functional programming, so you do single class, sorry, uh, you know, pure functions and stuff. I mean, Haskell doesn't even allow impure functions as far as I remember. But uh, yeah, so if you define a function, you make a habit to, you know, use the written types and stuff. For that so what I mean is if I use an inbuilt operator file dot read and give the path to a file which is invalid so it returns a tuple of error and you know inuit whatever the fuck this is so later on you can match like you store this or you can match or you can store this and this as is the tuple then you can use the pattern matching to match if we got the error or not and this is basically in the when block I think or whatever the you know switch case synonym and elixir we'll get to that uh, yeah I think that's it for this tutorial I think yeah next we shall look at keyword list and map and the then maybe let me see yeah then we will come to enum pattern matching and stuff oh short video I don't think so Anyway. All right, keyword list. So these are basically uh, two element tuple, uh, which means the tuple of size two. And we have key and value, and key is an atom, and the values can be anything, of course. And the keys are ordered, and keys do not have to be unique, like unlike maps or hash maps, if you have heard of them. Uh, keys can be you know same here and these are ordered so let's try some examples uh, so foo and let's say bar and hello so on so this is a keyword list and I am going to take this in the variable k so this is a keyword list of key atom and the value can be anything right and this more like a tuple of size two. and there's another syntax for this also so we can store this in k2 and we can use these brackets and separate it like this and same goes for this so hello will be an atom and separate it with comma right so we have k2 and k1, same thing, sorry, just k. Right, and keys are ordered and keys do not have to be unique, unlike maps. And that's why I think uh, we see this keyword list in the options of the argument, uh, as, a, as, a, as an options of the functions argument, right? Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, uh, I, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, uh, about the keys we can try to add let's say two uh, two atoms 
So this is a simple syntax, so I'm going to use this one. So let's say we have another value of hello and was. So let's see what happens. So this means basically we it is allowed to store two or three, uh, uh, sorry, uh, multiple elements, multiple keys of the same name. And what else? Da -da -da. Yeah. I think that's it. Uh, we can go to the maps and since first of all it's a cheaper of size too so we can remove this and uh, just have the hellos. Now maps. Yo. Sorry. What's that? Maps. And maps are basically hash maps. Hash maps, hash maps, you know about hash maps I presume. Let's say it's a key value, you know key value store like redis you have a key and you have a value and keys have to be unique of course and uh, uh, you can store some value against a key and you can you know i'm not teaching data structures here i'm just teaching the data structures of elixir so i presume that you know about hash maps and stuff. so this is how we do hash maps in elixir so we can create a map like this and we have a key of course these are atoms so food the value is bar and hello the value is less than one right so this is a map and we can store it like inside m so we can access the value of foo like this foo and the value is bar right and hello and we cannot say what's that why the value is nil? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hello is not an atom. Hello is a string. Right. Right. Nice. And now, let's not clear this up. And of course, uh, we can have some variable. Let's say. hello bear right x and we can store it into a map let's say we create another map and we can use uh, another you know key as the variable right let's say you are doing something dynamic on the fly at runtime so secret so you have the id of someone and you store the secret into the cache and is an id a secret or whatever you know rate limiting and stuff so you can create a map and you can use a dynamic x here and in, let's say you are going on in a loop so you can you know just trying to store all the secrets of all the user ids you have into the cache or the active users or whatever so basically the point is you can use variable as keys and we can have let's say the loop is running and it goes to the hello where user right and we have the secret for it so that's that and what else yeah as i said the duplicates are not allowed so if you add some duplicate to the map it will basically override that stuff so let's say we have m3 uh, we can take the simple map without the variable so that you guys don't get confused so we have m3 right or we can override this one to m as well i'm just you know i just want to use different variable names because but if I want to show you what M was, so it would have been overridden. So that's why I'm using different variables. But in Elixir, you don't need to, right? It just consumes memory. Why, why, why do you need three different variables for the same thing? If you're not using any one of them, you can use just one. But for example purposes, I'm using them. So hello world, foobar, hello one, right? So as I said, three variables. And not three variables, the same keys. So if we put the hello key to some string let's say world so it will be like this one will disappear right uh, where's up where's my cursor yeah. this one will disappear and the hello will be against the wall and we can check that in a minute i'm just thinking if i need to tell you anything else to do. yeah yeah so let's try to do that so we have our 
map is M M is this so I want to you know add hello and a, a same key with different value so we can use the Alexis syntax of let's say I think I showed you in the list like it will copy the entire map of M and it will create a new map with M and the new va value we are adding and we want to add to, 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 hello and we say 2 so now if would have we would have stored this inside M3 and we can see that M3 is hello 2 and M is hello 1 so what happened if you if if it would have been different value let's say hello uh, 5 it won't work because it only works when the key already exists inside the map so what happened here so m hello and it overrid, override the overrode the whole thing and 1 became 2 right hello okay yeah so i'm really finding an impulse to clear this up i don't like messy code huh Next, uh, yeah, uh, only you know this update syntax works with only the keys that exist, and I think it's risky, so we can always use map dot put, right? Uh, was, uh, but I want to show you something else first. Uh, we can also let's say we have this map, right? So we can also access foo like this instead of doing this like this. But this only works if the key, if your key is an item. So we can try to, you know, uh, it won't work with like hem hello because it's not an item, it's a string. So it will work like this. Right. So uh, we can, you know, structureize and using the discipline that we want to use only atoms as keys, right? So it's up to us. Uh, and next thing, if you want to add some other map key to the map, so this pipe simple syntax only works while updating the map, right? Same keys and stuff. So we can use the map dot put, and this takes in the map m, and this takes in the key, which is let's say new key, and the value, and the value is wo. Right. So I can print m now, and it won't say the new key because in Elixir it's a function programming language. Of course, we all know that, and function programming language does not change that original value it just copies it and creates a new one and this is what it's called you know immutability and stuff uh, i i really love this stuff so your original value won't be changed unless you do so so we can store it inside uh, m only and we can print m now so now m points to this and of course this old m values will be deleted and stuff from the memory but it's not our job beam black magic i think that's it uh, for this video maps and keyword list keyword list are not that important but maps are critical uh yeah so that's it i think it wraps up our collection series and next we can try to have what yeah next uh, on the line is enums and then pet matching and if else and stuff right cool thanks uh yeah i'll see you in the next one enough talk all right, today we are going to look at Indian rebels in Elixir, and these are basically like we have in JavaScript and stuff for each and sort and reduce and stuff we have in JavaScript. So we will look at the Elixir version of them. Let's uh, start. So Indian rebels are just let's see. Okay, sorry, my mouse wasn't working. Yeah, so. For enums or in new in numerables, <laughs> we need a collection. So let's create an empty list and let's just fill it up. I'm gonna just uh, I was writing hello, but I got a new keyboard, so I don't know what I did. So let's store this variable list, and we print the list. We will get the list. So now. This is the enum module in Elixir, and this has a lot of functions actually. If I do dot and tab, so many functions, right? Yeah, so we'll look at some of these. So enum dot, let me just clear it. Uh, 
we have the list intact so enum dot all and we provide the list right the first argument is a list of course and the second argument is the you know check you want to do and this will depict whether the every element of the list you know passes this that check or not for example let's create and this is called lambda in some so many languages right and Anom anonymous functions and stuff oh sorry not javascript elixir so single arrow single icon and so this will iterate over the each element of the list and we will have at a certain point of time this one this one this one so this one belongs to the s the current index element right so what do you want to do we want to just check the length s dot length uh, string this is how you check the length of the string in elixir string dot length s and we want to check if it's equal to let's say four and we need to end this by writing the end keyword boom false because every element of the list doesn't have the length of four but there's another function which is i guess any yes and true why because we have this element and its length is four and you can also you know do a lot of stuff like like uh, let's say uh you can you know check the length and you can validate something let's say that email or something you know valid or not all emails are valid then you only progress the bulk upload of the user let's say it's coming from a csv file or whatever right so the, the, there can be many use cases right and yeah i think that's all about all and any we can jump to next uh which we can look at this so, enum dot yeah chunk every in the docs let's yeah, we can look at chunk every i don't think there's any harm in that so chunk every is basically you know when you do data structures and stuff right there's whole damn use case of you know breaking down the list and you know partitioning subsets and all so this function won't solve all your dsa problems but it will give you the you know feature to divide the list in some certain way so let's say we have a list and we want to divide the list in uh let, we can create another list for example list two and let's put a lot of elements here so one two three four five six four. right i don't know how many elements are there right so enum dot chunk sorry about that enum dot chunk every and we will pass our list which is basically i miss vim it's i i excel otherwise i would have coded everything in vim but we will get get to the code base when I, when we are done with the basics list uh, List two, and we want to let's say divide the list into two pieces, like two elements each. So we will get this, and and list two was this. So it divided the whole damn list into this, like one, two, three, four, four, five, 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 six, six, uh, six, seven, six, six, and six, because it's an odd number of lists. That's why the last element is alone, right? And we can also you know chunk based on a condition and we can use the chunk by function for that so enum or chunk by and we can you know pass our previous list which was the list of strings right and we can pass the condition for which we want to so let's uh, let's call in the lambda or anonymous function or whatever they call it x and we can chunk by the list of length 
and that. This is basically more like a bracket in the languages, like closing the bracket. And we get everyone separately. And the original one was this. Why? Because every element of this list cannot be grouped by depending on the length. Why? Because every element has a different size. Right? If we add uh, another element, and uh, it's a bonus for this tutorial to add another element to the list, we do plus plus. That's it. So we can add uh, four, which is length four, and we can add one, two, three, four, five. It's a length of five, right? Yeah, that's enough for now. So our list is now updated, I presume. So list, yeah. Now if we run this, I chun by with my mouse. Let me just detail. Yeah, chun by list. List is this, and we are saying that chunk it by you know uh, the elements which have the length. So it will just group by the length of the same, right? Which means one two three four five stands alone. Four characters element stands together. And same goes with uh oh no 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 other than one two three yeah the stand alone right so what else hmm. ch -ch 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 -ch. so as you can see i i think uh that's why I wrote the one two three four five. It's it's of size five, but uh, this one is also of size five, right? So why these are not grouped together? Because it iterates only on uh, you know linearly or in the forward direction. This one we are not calling this and comparing each element, right? It's 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 it becomes nested nested loop, right? If you want to you know compare this element with each element that's fine you can just go ahead and do that there's some dsa coming here just bear with me and if you want to compare this element only you can compare with this in a single iteration when you get to this you can compare with this but if you want to compare this with this you would have to you know loop it again so uh, this chunk by doesn't do that it's just iterates over one time that's why it's not there yet right so this one, whatever this is, hecky, right? It comes to this, says okay, length is five. It comes to this, says okay, length is not five. Different, different. Four length, okay, one list. Four again, one list. Now five length, but it doesn't know that it has the five length because it's moving forward. That's why separately, right? Okay, too much knowledge. Next, uh. Hmm. We can look at each, like if you want to iterate over each element of the list. So list, and we can pass in the and the and we can say I dot oops and right, and it just depicts one, two, three, four, five, and this was a list, and this okay tuples means that everything done successfully and you you could have say said that we can also use chunk by to you know chunk by and uh, what was the uh, first function i showed you all and any function that we can you know we have the s here we can just i dot puts there but it defeats the purpose no it's made to do certain other things and each it just iterates read and gone read and write to the console and gone it will just compare everything so it's a disaster actually so don't do that if you want to iterate something and just print it out or process something on your own just use each don't don't say that we have so many ways to you know iterate with like a map and you know whatever it's, it's bad you are just eating the performance and you don't even know that yeah so each is there of course we have javascript map in elixir as well so in num.map and we pass in the i'm gonna pass the numbers this too lit 
two, whatever, same thing, I guess. And we can, we have the access to each element, right? Just like JavaScript, everybody knows JavaScript these days. X. And I'm just returning the same number again. Oh, uh, it means that. Uh, yeah. So I was saying I was returning the same number again. Let me just fix it. Uh, enum not map list two function. I don't think so. I have any problem here. No, I did the end keyword. I did everything right, I guess. Undefined function, there is no such import. X. Oh, sorry. So as you can see, Elixir if it doesn't if it doesn't find the you know defined variable, it just tries to invoke it. That's why it says x slash zero. Too many bonuses in this video. Thank me later. So x by zero because x doesn't exist and it won't say that you didn't define x variable you don't have to define it's a dynamic language so it will just try to invoke this like oh it must be a function coming from somewhere but no no such import that's why it's erroring out but we use x we didn't use x we use s in the lambda that's why and this will work oh fuck like this no oh my god uh Yes, yeah, so we, it just returned the you know same list again, and this was the original list. List two. So, what I want to do is let's leverage something. I want to divide everything with two. So, as you can see, it returned the same list, but the each element divided by two, and that's what maps are for. I think that's it. Let's go anything else. And we have like math.min math.max in javascript we have enum.min and we can pass the collection list two and we will get one we could print list two we have one two three five so minimum is you know yeah max is six no 45 no it's 67 Yeah, I think it mean min max and stuff. What else? Filter. You want to do filter? Hmm. Da, 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 da. Yeah, let's go with filter. And filter, of course, if you want to just, you know, remove some elements in the list based on a certain condition. You can use filter and you have access to the element if s is let's say smaller than five we want to remove this so we get a new list one two three four one two three four you just filter out oh sorry it's it's processed by elimination so it's just filtering out all the elements which pass in this condition all the elements smaller than five will be returned back to you which one two three four five that's what filters are for and next uh we can i think we can also sort enum dot sort and it's just sorted and you can see 67 is the is at the last like and elixir also has you know at length sorting stuff like it, it depicts like if you try to sort a list of it's a string enum and stuff it has some priorities and stuff uh, i i don't want to go there it's just too subjective uh yeah let's stick to the real world use cases and of course if you want to sort uh, let's say if you have a map i don't think i discussed about the map i did yes if you want to you know let's say you have a map Let's say you have you are maintaining some you know like score and stuff it's a real body use case you cannot run from it let's say first one is four and map okay we can have a list because we want to sort a list so count 
or we can say use atoms right so if we want to let me just give it a bigger number right if you want to sort enum dot sort map we get a sorted map but if you want let's like, say it's some nested stuff and you or you it's a string you want to sort it based on the strings length and maybe you store the likes in a string so the length of the string depends uh depicts that uh, the likes are you know greater or so so you can you know just play with it like this and pass into this and you can have access to the lambda and in here you will find all the element so this will be your element and you can you know just pick that count right l dot count this one count uh you are just sorting and you can say that how you want to sort it right so just like elixir we get a and b so let's say a uh, you want to sort it in the decreasing order so i i think you would have to do this or maybe opposite i don't know uh count so the element will be l1 and l2 because you will be sorting this based on the two elements right so let's see we get uh, l2 count okay no 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 identified function l so we get 43 and 45 and if we do this we get 5 and 43 i think that's it uh, we wasted enough time on this uh we also have unique stuff in um dot unique right and it will just print out the unique numbers right as you can see i repeated six multiple times but it just spits out six only one time and we can also have unique by which we can you know we have a map you know dot map sorry not map unique by and we can pass in the uh, map and we have access to this and we can decide what we want to do right how we want to you know make it unique on what basis so in here we have count so on the count basis we want it to be unique right and this was the map so if it would have contained you know multiple keys so you you can unique based on a certain key not count if not count then likes or user id or whatever huh. and 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 capture operator capture operator yes yes hmm so this is very cool stuff in elixir let's say you know you have been seeing that we are writing these lambdas and stuff we can use the capture operator in elixir and make it shorter but uh, Bigness will not be able to read it even I have some problem reading it time to time right but I'll do my best to iterate over it so we have a collection list 2 and we are just printing it out that's what we did right one two three four or we have a map sorry the list and we want to divide entire lists elements by two that's what we did all right now capture operator is just a you know short head syntax syntax and the you know beam knows beam knows that you know what are we talking about so rather than writing the lambda delete this and we can capture it like this so this ampersand now capture operator you know uh, I'm, I'm just gonna read it out from the docs so that you understand better capturing each triple of the list numbers 
and assigning each attribute to the variable and one and it's passed through the map function so this means that this this ampersand or whatever capture operator capturing each iterable of the list of the numbers and assigning each iterable to the variable which is we are going to write and one so this will capture each element of the list these list and this will be the element right of the list now what we can do we can just divide it by two and we get the same result I know, I know, it's hard. Play with me. What I did, we have a list, we have a list. Map, map. This, we captured the x and we divide it by 2 and return it. Now, we captured the x and we divide it by 2. Where is the x? It's in 1. Right. If it would have contained second two arguments, M person one, M person two. That's it. Easy peasy. I think I should close the chapter. That's enough basics for you. Okay. Next, uh, we will play with pattern matching. Lovely. See ya. All right. Let's continue now. And the next topic is pattern matching. yeah so and this is how you comment in elixir by the way if you are wondering why this what's what's this called hash yeah pattern matching uh hmm it's a tricky topic isn't it uh let me just show you so x is equal to one which means you assign the value of one to the x yes uh yeah but uh in elixir we do uh pattern matching and which means that in here this x is equal to one we are pattern matching one with x and if that's true then we are getting the result back and thus x has the value of one but if we do opposite of x then one because x is one right and if we do one uh is equal to y compilation error what is y you know there is no y but if we do y is equal to 2 then it means that y pattern matched to 2 okay done deal y now is 2 and now we can do 2 is equal to y now there is a catch if uh, you know the uh, if it, it is not able to pattern match like why we didn't it even define it so that's why I, uh, you know, told you in the beginning, right, in the last video or so, because uh, that uh, uh, Elixir tries to invoke whatever it finds not defined. So why is not defined? So it's it it uh, talked to himself like, oh, this must be a function. So it tried to invoke it, but there is no import, right? That's why it crashed. I hope I'm making sense because I feel like I am not. So one. Two, three simple list right now we pattern match the list to one two three four this list variable right if we do this blah 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 now list is one right we overrode that but now the list is one okay but before the list was one two three four we pattern match it to this Right, don't get confused with uh, you know assigning and pattern matching. The pattern matching idea is uh, it will it will get clear in a bit. So one is equal to list. Now it says yeah okay one is equal to list. List of one element is list. But if we do one two three four, that's exactly the list we pattern match to the list variable in the beginning. It's crashed. Match error because list you matched it to one. Now it's one. You are doing one, two, three, four pattern match. No, it won't work. But if you do the opposite, then yeah, it will just override that and list and pattern match list to new list. And now you can pattern match one, two, three, four, five with this list, and it will say true. Otherwise, it will say false. 
if you put the value on the left hand side and the variable on the right hand side right that's what i'm trying to show now uh there are specific use cases for pattern match uh, these are just uh, these examples will you will not use much but let me just uh, talk about pin operator first because since we are here on the topic so as you can see as you can see this is the list variable let's say list 2 we pattern match to 1 2 3 4 5 6 right now if you pattern match list 2 to 1 2 as you can see list 2 will get pattern match to 1 2 and it will just spit out uh, 1 2 right but we don't want to do that we want let's say uh the, uh the pin operator i'm talking about is this and it is used to perform right uh since we have the fear of you know reassigning or repat matching list two with some other list or some other value and let's say and after that there after that step we uh want to use the list two value of one two three four five six somewhere right so it won't it won't pattern match right that's what i've been showing you so for that we have the pin operator which means let's say x is equal to 1 correct now x is equal to 2 will override that and x will become 2 but if we use the pin operator it means that yeah the pattern match value of x match it to 2 please didn't match didn't assign the value of x x will remain 1 if you use pin operator right that's what i'm talking about and of course you can use pin operator in map keys and function clause let's say an example key it's in the docs of course oh hello right so this is how we write map right key and value and we are just pattern matching it now this is the real world example which you will be doing heavily if you create elixir projects i'm sure you do that's why you are so walls world right so key value right and i have fucked up somewhere oops it's not golang and what's the problem man i i don't know uh, uh, two cannot use the real key inside a map oh map is a key and there is no key let me just define a key first i i use that i define the key right so it's crashing why oh yeah it's saying that it uh sorry i have to use pin operator so i want to you know use the value of hello with this so it will just pattern match the key of hello to hello and this will get populated via this and since we are using pin operator and value will have the world after pattern matching this right done done so key was anyway hello but the value became the word so what happened here uh, quite tricky pay attention please what we did let's say you get the data from some api it's in the map right and it says elixir rust it's a spoiler actually uh right move from elixir to rust <laughs> right so now you have this data let's say data right and you are processing something and you have <clears throat> you have the you know lang variable to let's say elixir or you know old lang we want to uh we want to, we want to process that old lang to new lang something we are playing that we have the old lang right now we got the data and we are in the you know one block or the switch case or whatever the elixir style you know of switch case and we are just trying to match the data with the stuff we have so we do like old lang one we have the old lang elixir right so we want to pattern match that and this is how we do it old lang and new lang will come from the data right and we don't do camel case in elixir new line and we can pass the data so uh, 
of oh, course spin operator i always forgot right so old lang was elixir anyway and the new lang we get is plus right that's the idea that's what i'm talking about and this is very heavily used in developing apis and stuff with elixir and if you want to learn more about it you can read the docs and if you want a practical use case for it you can check out my udemy courses right for elixir let's say i i think i've created two elixir courses or something like the most popular one is the what uh udemy uh, let me just udemy 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 yep 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 where is it where is it where is it yeah this one right and in here we develop the graphql api in elixir phoenix i've got the rest api one as well the course and oh this is my course uh, and we develop the real time application for it and we do all kind of apis and stuff so the stuff i just taught you about pattern matching and stuff we use heavily there so if you want a practical use case which i always want when i'm learning something go ahead and check it out and of course that should be the idea after completing this course or getting the overview of Alexa basics you must move on to projects otherwise you will forget everything and it will just be a waste right yeah i think that's it about pattern matching mm, yeah that's it i think we can start with if else statements now and let's keep it everything modular and let's start in a, another video that's so that i can name this video videos titan carefully and single-handedly about see you soon yo today is gonna be a very important lesson and we are going to study about conditionals and stuff right let's write another function let's play do n that's you that's how you write functions and it's a def play do n and the single line functions as def play right i guess this you return string i guess so yes that's how we that's that's how we do it anyway the topic of here is the topic at hand is the conditionals now let's say we have the variable pet matches something hello and you want to check if this is a valid string or not so if if right string module valid pass in the string and of course we start the if block and it ends here but the catch here is in elixir you write else inside the if block only inside the do and end between the do and so in here if block ends we return something like uh, valid string bro right else nah try again right and i just formatted it with control s and now we can store this value inside res a variable pat match it and it will just return the last line of the block in elixir is the the last line of the function in elixir is the return value and we return the s res here right and since we are using res nowhere else just here we are just wasting memory by reassigning by just using uh you know reassigning this to a new variable and just returning it out we can just simply move all this and it will just spit out so now this function returns a string it's either valid string bro or not dragon so let's try to run this and go to your command line and to run this and not the ix shell but this project so you can say ix dash x mix Compile generated and our module is first dose. First dose we have, yes. And I'm gonna alias it as FD, right? And FD has function of hello, I guess. It is just world, right? Atom. Now we have the web function play. Def, also FD dot play. Valid string bro, right? This string is valid so if else enough i guess so now next is ta -ta 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 -ta. and you and you call this unless i guess in elixir 
the else yeah we have the unless as well and the unless means if statement i'm sure you know about if statement from another languages if statement runs if it's true if not else and just do it else otherwise no. unless it's just a negative statement it will run if something is not true so is integer right pass in the string do not an end right so if you see the benefit here is you don't have to use if because you cannot use if it's just you want to use the negative uh, value the negative condition and return something you don't care about the truthy if you convert it to if else you will just leave the ifs uh, block empty because you you don't want to do anything there you just need the negative case that's why you can use unless i guess right and inside this you can type recompile it will recompile the project because we wrote some new you know sexy lines <laughs> uh, i'm gonna alias the first dose as capital oh sorry small f i i don't want to use this as fd oh i guess you cannot <laughs> if you cannot yeah oh damn shit something new i learned today yeah and now we have the case statement you can just comment it out case statement switch block blah blah case oh too much colang node to be using forward slashes as comments we are in elixir mode now case if it's necessary to match against multiple patterns we can use case of course multiple patterns that's what i was talking about in the bad matching video maybe i will upload that after this video otherwise you will get confused okay hello right case let me just put on the data let's say you have the data uh it's an atom uh it's a tuple tuple of okay and if you uh, let me tell you if you do some network calls and elixir and stuff and some concurrency stuff and most of the function returns a tuple of okay and some data and let's say we have the data boom right so we want to pattern match it right so pattern match data fuck right now let's say it's a network call so it can be uh, it can succeed or it can fail so okay or error that's how elixir tells us if something got fucked up or not it's okay or not right that's a convention the elixir libraries use right so we can fucking yeah <laughs> you really gonna ban me we want to pattern match data with tuple of let's say error and we have the message and we can return something something went wrong right and if we have the tuple of ok and text and we just return the text right it will just return this it will come to this and since it's the last of the function it will just return that um something wrong in here yeah and of course since it's a switch case or whatever when block in kotlin right we have the default and we can say i don't know we are not developing, developing a project here bro that i will define something uh error messages and used okay okay we can just yeah it's a good idea we can use multi-line stuff puts message and it on this that's how you write multi-line hmm? oh, 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 oh. okay let me just pass 
that you know recompile and this underscore means that you don't want to use this right uh yeah and we want to run fd dot play boom something broke the data was boom okay okay matched here i don't know this boom boom we do it to error recompile something went wrong if we do it to write something random the f word recompile play i don't know because it didn't match this atom no error no okay i don't know and and this can be anything not error we you can say error too it's, it's just a convention to use tuple of okay and error to denote the success and failure and error. so that's why all, every as you can see the rest is based on the standards right it's the practice we follow that 200 means okay there is no check in the browser that it'll, it will say no this status code is invalid unless you put it manually it's just a convention that's what i'm trying to tell you huh i think that's it for the case statement i am pretty much tired here mm. and since we use the pattern matching right we can use pattern matching in here as well of course uh, if you if you want to pattern match and not reassign something right so what do i mean with that Three point one four. Let's go here. Let me just comment it out. We have value as one point two three, right? Case. Okay, do value. right and passing the value now what do you think it, what will happen here what if i do this value and what do you think what's happening here man right so i told you in the pattern matching video about this so we are using this Pattern match value 1.23 here to compare this. Okay, I know it won't print out here, but it will pattern match value to okay and have the value of uh, value variable become okay. And that's a disaster actually <laughs> because it will just reassign. Na? That's what we discussed in the pattern matching video, I guess. Please. Oh no, okay, right. Why? Because this didn't match to this. That's why it came to this. And this is now independent since there is no pin operator. Independent variable. It just pattern matched OK to this and assigned the value of OK to this. Right. I, I presume you are you understand what's happening here. I guess that's it for this video. Let's not stress this up. This is the case statement video. I will just name it. And let's move on to the next one in the next one and we have the condition and the with block i'm pretty thirsty i'm gonna just grab a drink all right so next is the con or con no condition thing uh like previous languages had uh if else if else if else if nested if else right which is never the best practice of course so elixir offers us the con variable uh, not the variable the keyword which is this right and actually let's skip the shell part let's try to code this up so i'm just creating a dummy very uh, function and then we will run it from the shell so there test con and what this do 
let's say we have a condition of um is even right and let let's simply do something more from the docs which is basically um yeah so let's start writing the con on clause and i i have the extension that's why it just auto completes otherwise we can write from scratch if you don't believe me so con do and now we have we will have our conditions here so 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and then we want to do something right correct result right and the next can be 2 minus 2 is equal to 1 which is false of course uh, false result and what else yeah I think that's it for now um, also uh, it throws the error if no condition matches like if both the conditions are false then it will just throw the error right just like case statement and we can handle that by you know giving it a default case more like switch default case which is true and true then we it did not match any of our previous conditions right and it's erroring out i don't really know why but let me see uh cannot do remote function uh, line inside a match mm -hmm. oh sorry we are just comparing it right to double equal to not equal to it's it's just bad matching and assigning that shit. yeah so let's try to recompile that and now we have the module name which is first dose so first dose dot the function name is test con test con. right call it did not match any of our previous conditions why because 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5 2 minus 2 is not equal to 1 right so we cast it all if we want to match it then we can say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 or 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 and then we can just recompile rather than restarting the shell most people don't know about this even i didn't at some point and now we can simply call that and false result because we it's just a statement right it's not a false result it's a true result it matched with this and then because this return false right 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5 2 minus 2 is equal to 0 true then boom if didn't uh, it didn't match this before when we had one here so that's why it printed it out did not match any of our previous condition right i think that's it for con um yeah and in the next we will look at with block right i think it's more complicated than this let's record a previous uh, different video for this all right so with block dun, dun, dun. too much other languages with right and this is basically used for when we have the nested case statements or switch statements or whatever uh nested nested case statements and it has a lot of use cases in when you are calling some api right and you know calling another api which is dependent on the previous one like in the microservice architecture like you're fetching from one service then you know writing to another service right so you can uh, what you generally do is like if we have three calls right one is um let's say db select right and the second can be uh, validation of regex and this let's say a network call and we are calling some api or internal api or some external api to validate the regex right or oh, whatever it's just an example network call and the third can be the db write something right so what you generally do is you will first call the i'm always forgetting how to write comments in elixir too much rust go and cpp <laughs> right so 
nested case how will you write this you will write like this so we have the case here right so you have some api which you run like tuple of okay or whatever then you will write something like uh, case uh, some res of the api right and then you will do like uh, you will pet match it right so it returns tuple of okay then uh, we have the data right since it's a select query then you do something like uh, you, you know uh, another uh, thing which is uh, validate the network call uh, validate the request from the network call so now here you will write the validate network call code right and then inside that you will uh, again write case statement to pattern match the result of that validation right case tuple of okay or whatever network call fail or what what happened to it right so it will result in the nested case statements so to avoid this we have with and we can write this by using this test with and and of course in since we don't have any arguments then we can skip this parenthesis part because at least anyway but it doesn't recognize you know it writes to invoke it right so with let's create a user object user map and this will my first name can be user first name and the last name can be last right so we have the user object now we want to pattern match multiple things so i'm i'm keeping it as simple as possible because if i try to write the code for this right so then uh, asynchronous otp and all those network calls tp calls will be into the picture and i don't want to confuse you guys since it's a beginner friendly course uh, we will do this in some other course when we when we explore the concurrency part in the next course uh, which will be purely based on elixir otp and concurrency stuff cool stuff so since this beginner friendly so i'm assuming that nobody knows about these kind of stuff right now and now i'm just taking the simple examples mostly they are from the blocks only right i don't want to complicate things in this course <laughs> i have a lot of course which uh, we will build a project from scratch like real time apis all that good stuff and we complicate things there because i presume that you know you know elixir but uh, let's skip that in this course so with and what we basically uh, do here is we want to start pet matching so i'm gonna just skip this to there right and now we want to pat match multiple things which means so we can use the map dot fetch function right and uh, we want to pass in the map and we want to fetch the key which is first right and uh, if the map finds the key with the value then it returns triple of okay and the value or the first right so now we have some another call let's say assume that this is the db select query right so now we are pattern matching this and we're saying okay this should be okay right and the next we are writing another thing which is basically a map dot fetch user and we want to fetch the last the value and this assume that this is a um, network call right and we are pattern matching the result which is basically a uh, triple of okay so the network call failed or not so uh, we want we want to do something when all of this pass right all of this this passed triple of okay this pass triple of okay right and then we want to do something we want to do something what we can return something let's say we can return the full name right so full name can be first and the string can get concatenation or whatever first last and this will return the 
full name and we can space it with this and this right and this will be full name and we can simply return this full name and something is not right here because we need to give it a comma right oops yeah i think that's it we have with block oh sorry full name and what are we missing here there's some error here do there's no end here right and what's the problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. incomplete unexpected reach and the line i don't think there's not there should not be any end here yeah there isn't Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. full name with and we map the map dot fetch first with this and then comma and the second with this the key and when both of these match right we'll get to the error in a second uh, just debugging when both of this match right so the db select query match successfully then then and only then this will run right so it's very important to understand this it's very complicated stuff but it looks easy network call then only we will call the network and then we are matching that okay network call passed and then we can do something like a return or insert into the db or whatever right so this is very clean rather than nested if else statement like if this pass then do something else nested right you understand what i'm saying otherwise in elixir way if we are not using with then we will have to use case like okay we call the network then we pattern match the network then if it's pattern match correctly then we open that block and then we will write that again the case statement for the next call which is the whatever call or whatever validation we are doing anyway enough talk um this is crashing and it's breaking my heart to the core ta 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 Huh. God damn it, it's just an indentation thing. <laughs> yeah, like I said, there was no end. So we can say successful concurrent calls can insert into the DB now. Right, and you can do anything you want here because you know that both of your things passed. Like this resulted true and this resulted true then you can do a successful operation or whatever you want to do and this if it return false then it will not do this call right so that's what i'm trying to tell you so you, you are we are returning the full name and okay so we cannot we sh can return this only the full name base last right and just recompile it oh come on uh, first last i'm not sure why it's ring out okay, last does not exist okay okay this is not second this is last we compile test with first name last name which is basically a name let's say code dexterity code dexterity so now to convert this into the case statement to make you help understand this better so test without with do right and now we will you can just copy this 
right? The map, let's say it, it came from Chang JSON or whatever. So this is the map, and now we want to do this with case. So case, case what? Let's say first call map dot fetch treat it as method call or db call and pass in the map and the key which is first and the second call will write second call in a bit let's say if it's uh you can write the second call here and pass the last but but if the first call is needed for the second call to you are understanding what i'm saying right <laughs> so case first call now we are pattern matching okay map returns triple of okay and the key or sorry the value which is let's say first call value right and now what do you want to do we want to let's say print it first call value and then what we want to do we want to map dot fetch user and the last key last and this is the second call now what you want to do we want to write the case again right the case second call now if you want to again nest it same thing okay second and you do you want to do something right now now you can return the full name okay so now we can also use interpolation here because the error was because of there was no last keyword last and we can say first last right huh. and there are no curly braces for this sorry 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 let's just do not even do i guess this will just work just fine yeah and why it's not working as expected okay triple of okay do and okay first call value then the first does not exist god damn it because it's first call value let's say first right working as expected let's say recompile clear please um test without with so dexterity full name again so the point was that you are writing nested case statements as you can see fetching something pattern matching it if it returns okay like pattern match correctly it was true uh second call and inside that case second case it can go up to n right with with you are just saying okay this worked fine then tell me how it works and this worked fine okay then do something finally you are doing this no nesting so that was the whole purpose of test with and test without with i hope you understood this um and of course uh we can also discuss the edge cases mm, if nothing match then of course there, there will be error and i think that's it uh and also the elixir's new version 1.3 uh supports else inside the width right let's say nothing matched so since we are on the width right this i tested for you to witness that how nested things work um with 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 this matched this matched okay now what we can do we did something like do this right now nothing matched then we have else inside with and we can pattern match like this error io dot puts error 
if not then if there's something we don't know we don't know what happened right and of course this will be we are returning something right hmm. we need to end the block right unable to format do, 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 do. we have error do something else with block oh and one more thing since we are uh, separating uh, all the calls with commas yeah so if you if this is confusing you you can look it like this so what we are doing here is we are just it's an inline call match this okay match this okay then do this like so this will help you understand this better and there's the there's also the as thing that uh, okay when uh, nothing matched like with fail to match this then we have the else block inside with of course and this will match this and uh, since we are writing the else then we need to pass it into this and we need to remove this since it's not the inline do we also have else now right so we can say We remove all this and this is the this is not the inline do now it's do n right so this will pattern match this and this and return this now we want to include else so okay nothing matched then do something do what uh, okay nothing matched so now we can paste our else here what was that right copy it whatever else and then i got puts we don't know what right right so we compile code dexterity sorry test with so it works so if, if it doesn't work then we don't know what happened you you can fail one of the statement and then you can check let's say we can try we don't know what happened because map dot fetch returns triple of okay not okay k right i think that's it we coded a lot in this section with block as always tricky as well <laughs> we'll see you in the next one and now the finally the pipe of it what y'all will waiting for pipe of it mm, most of you have looked at elixir wallpapers and it has some symbol and this that symbol is pipe they, they are doing some cool stuff right using this symbol in the wallpaper we will do it in the language so what we are trying to do is let's say there are multiple function calls right and the result of one is needed in the next don't, don't confuse it with with i'm saying that the result of one function is needed as an argument for another function right so for that let's get function one right and it returns let's say inline function we'll cover a function in the next section two uh one right now let's get some more function two and priv the previous one and now we append it Priv, priv, two, right? Just, just an example. 
there is no logic here correct too much node Elixir doesn't error out when you write functions with same argument and same name because it will just pattern match and this is the this will be the fun to get pattern match and this will return two not three right so it's not statically typed language so the name should have to be different it works on pattern matching all right so fun one fun two fun three now what you want fun one call it uh, Let's say call fun three cost. Fun three needs fun two, and fun two needs fun one. Correct or not, baby? And this will just spit out whatever that returns. Let Let's run first. Recompile. What that test pipe? One two three. That was the idea. All along one two three so this is pretty beautiful if you ask me but some people don't like it including myself so the problem here is uh, first of all let me tell you what is happening here so fun one needs previous and that previous is fun two so fun two and fun two needs its previous which is fun one and fun one is genesis or the starting point just like blockchain or linked list or whatever fun one nested function calls one after another we can simplify this using the pipe operator which is fun3 or fun1 first its result we pass it to fun2 right and its result we pass it to fun3 cool or not cool let me again Remove this also because we have one. And if you do this right and this to be fair, let's recompile it, rerun it one, two, three. Oh, sorry, one, three. Compile one, two, three. Who? So this is not good. This is good. Now we can pass it like this. Fun one, fun two, fun three, and we can remove the parentheses also because it's just one simple argument. But it is recommended to use the parentheses whenever you use the pipe operator because uh, people might you know misread the code because it's, since the pipe operator is being used and people might not understand that uh, okay this is a function call or it takes in arguments or whatever right it's up to you so the point was I, as i was saying this is single line and we can remove this shit this is also and in line thing right like this this is neat and it works you don't believe me right we can do it like this or we can do it like this also fun one enter i'm just playing now nothing in the books right so it's just basically happening like this or you can say like this also so fun one you're passing this puppy in here and fun two and fun three right so this is what is happening here fun one is being passed as a first argument to fun two and fun two is being passed as a first argument to fun three right if i format it it will remain it this way and this still works Ooh. so this was pipe operator let's close this video enough babbling see you around while we are at it, we can also test uh, nested statements, sorry, nested fun uh, functions with multiple arguments. Let's say this returns something 
something something all right but it takes the argument also right so what this will do let's say this returns uh, this receives previous and also a number right and we can use this num here right uh, Okay, and this also receives a number, and we can just print it out to visualize. Nothing logical here. In here, so now we can return. We can do it like this. So this is not the first argument. No, no, no. The first argument was f n one for f n two. So now that's why that's why it is recommended to use parentheses always because since we have multiple arguments, now you cannot. You you don't expect me to understand this code, do you? Do you expect me to understand this? This will work, but it removes readability. It works, and we have working. Parentheses are required to when piping the function call. So if you format this, mix will, mix will always always do it like this. Put or you can do like I did. Like this, right? Good. Yeah, I think that's it. Next. All right. Probably the last big lecture. Functions, of course, and since we have covered most of it, won't be as big, right? Functions. We will. We have been writing all of this in the functions, right? I'm all only including the topics which are beginner friendly in this course, like we can deep dive more probably i will create the advanced elixir course but yeah if you if you know this stuff the basic stuff to get you started then you start practicing and start making projects on your own reading documentations tutorials then you will understand the more advanced things like uh, guards and stuff might include get the guard lecture comprehensions or whatever right I, i'm covering the basic things like functions or whatever in uh, other languages you find the crash courses like they cover data types and you know strings state times functions right that was the idea of this course like i'm not i am not going to what's that word turn away from my goal yeah i decided that it will be beginner friendly so i'm trying my best but there are a lot of topics i want cover i want to cover but i cannot because it's beginner friendly cool functions how do you write functions i have already told you in previous video so def hello to hello to that's why because we already have hello function i guess so this is a function this is starting body do and the end statement and if you want to write something in line or single function right so single line function so you can return this comma and then you can do something like i dot put so you can return something you can do something right and this will this will print out correctly just understand and trust me that it will not going to show its demo and of course uh, functions are single class functions and anonymous functions of course uh, we use those in the enum thing right so let's say sum and we are basically you know writing an anonymous function and this it this receives variable this and we want to do something with this like a plus b and end it so sum and this is the reference of that right sum and we can call it like this and we can do this two three and it runs five basically simple anonymous function and assigning it to sum or pattern matching it to sum right next uh anonymous function are so popular that there is a short hat shorthand syntax for this straight from the docs this statement <laughs> and this is basically you can also write sum two and you can convert that shit right this one you can write this also watch carefully one plus two this is a capture operator by the way sum two of course our lang thing so foreign that's why it's our lang right Five seven twelve. So our length syntax, as you can see, sum two, capture operator, 
I I recommend you you do this, but uh, in some cases in the libraries it is being used, and it's more. It's not syntactical sugar, but it's concise. Up to you. Some to capture, 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 which means this will capture this function. Like it's, it will call this. This will capture this and add it by capturing the second one. Some to same thing. Seven plus five, twelve. And of course, we can do pattern matching and stuff, which we are doing inside function. We can do whatever we want. And named function, these are the named function, right? This is the name of that function. This was an anonymous one. I'm skipping that because we have been covering functions unconsciously or subconsciously in the previous lectures. First line functions, all those good stuff. Function. Hmm. I want to show you the default arguments. Let's say there is message variable here. And you want to write the default argument for this, like if we don't pass the variable. So it's not this, right? It's not equal to right. It's this backslash this, and this will be hello. And we can suffix it like this. Hello. Cool. Recompile. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Wild. What? Wild? What's wild? There's another function named hello here or not? This is very strange, man. Why is it returning world? Um, okay. <laughs> Scare the shit out of me. This hello is belong to this, baby. This is a function. Like I said, if you're not, if it's not a variable, then Elixir will try to invoke it. So we need to, don't need to pass this here. We need to pass the message. Damn. 25. Hello, right. Cool. Function with default arguments. That's it. Um, and we can of course pattern match something. I will show you a cool stuff. Let's say we have function greetings. Hello. Right. And we have another function greetings. Like I said, no error name and we can call greeting name right you understand what is happening here and this will call we are calling this this will return hello and we'll concatenating the name pass in this right and greetings let's say we are saving tuple of okay and name here so do what you want to do greeting concatenate with name cool What's your problem? Yeah, of course. So that that that's the warning is there, but that's exactly what I want to show you. So this will work just fine. This will work just fine. This won't be called ever, like ever. Recompile. First rows dot greetings. Hello, cool. And we pass greetings and the name code hello code this called successfully right 
let's put an identifier on this third because it will return the same output otherwise we will not be able to differentiate and this call is basically like this right you're calling this like this and of course if it's a single argument then you can pass it like this it looks like cool stuff hello cool right now i want to pass in super log okay and the message which is the name which is cool yep 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 Errors were found with the given argument, not a bit string, whatever. Let's say, uh, let's not uh, receive the triple of okay, let's uh, receive a map. And the map, 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 map will have a key. Name. Name. Key compile. Right, editing out. It's editing out because of the because of the error, which is occurring on line one one six, not one one seven. It's not even being called, man. Not even being called. Let's not concatenate it. <laughs> the error is because we are trying to concatenate this string with this name. Okay. Hmm. but I wanted to show you something let me try to explain it so this is running out because we are passing a map map is just fine just fine just fine but it is trying to do it here and trying to concatenate string with a map which doesn't work this operator only works with the string Ish. map is not a string the point is we are pattern matching name and now this pattern match first since we have the same uh, same name function so this okay doesn't take any argument this is just working just fine right this takes one argument and the pattern match for it there is no condition it's just a variable placeholder name can hold hold a string a map a tuple anything so name but name pattern match to this man map i'm trying to concatenate it and this will never come this will never get triggered this this 117 so to remove this let's return the name only for starter so that it doesn't error out right and in here as well let's return the name only so but we can Put a log statement here. IO dot puts I ran this didn't run. There is no I ran statement here. So this pat match to this not this because it's just global it's just a default case of the switch statement or the true case of the vid right or the else case of the vid and the conditions true case name can pat match to anything we are not pat matching it to map name can store string map whatever that's why it's run this but if we just do this black magic and put it here and recompile just clear the log name I ran understand and it's not returning the tuple it's returning the name and I ran so this okay greetings okay first argument there is no argument okay pattern match to this okay name name we have a key name okay and okay okay cool go away I ran 
and if we pass in some other key like new right this will run it didn't bad match to this right this will run the tuple this didn't bad match that's why that's how bad matching works in functions i think i've confused you a lot but that's it is what it is um default arguments i think the only thing left in the case of functions are guards and after that we will just try to explore strings which is beginner needed and we have been exploring strings a lot and I, I, I will give some intel about date time also shall we record different video for guards or we can do this in here as well let's try to okay <clears throat> Let's let's do it do this in a different video. All right, guards. And luckily we can extend this example only. Am I recording or what? Greetings, greetings, greetings. So let's say another function name right and we want to do something like whatever the fuck we want to do and we can return the name put a log statement to understand that it ran last okay so this will never run this will never never run it's also same this clause for greeting cannot match because previous clause at line al always matches. That's what I was saying. You don't believe me. Name will match. It will return. Whatever we pass, we pass map. This will match. We pass anything else. This will match. And it will never come to this. Like it's basically the same function with some different code in it, which different code is i.puts as of now. So guards are basically, you know, when we have the same signature of the function, then guards help us to understand or uh, help elixir to understand which function to run so this we can put this guard here this is the guard is we can use a string or whatever uh -huh, is adam 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 we can use Adam. So if name is then Adam, then only then run this function and we can combine Adam with string. Yo. Because if it's uh, some other thing, then of course this will crash, right? So if it's an Adam, we want to do this, right? And let's say if name is then is list name. Then run this function and we can use list dot first name and we'll return this. We can also pattern match this to let's say you know like this. This and x and the rest. Or what was that? Rest. It was like this only. Oh sorry, too much node. <laughs> yeah, you but uh, let's stick to guards for now. We compile. Is list name is list name now let's try to run it that's a problem there's no guard in here oh I'm not writing card to all the functions so we can do it is okay What's this binary thing? Who added that? Yeah. So, it is to name if it's an atom, do something. Do this. Concatenate with string. Name if it's a list, 
do something like spit out the first thing right and yeah i think that's it Mm-hmm. 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 Should work. We compile. Mm-hmm. It's setting out because of this. Just hidden the name. Like this one. It, it's yelling at us to concatenating with string yeah i think it converts into binary the string and then you know with this operator so we can use this only this works fine with atoms the name yeah this will convert it to string it's creating two and we want to pass atom right so it converted it to string and it returned atom yo which is this right because because the argument was atom as you can see the function name is same and the argument number is also same but we are checking based on the condition of that type that's cool stuff and now we want to pass the list one two three four five and it will return what it will return four my friend okay okay <laughs> the list dot passed so it will return one uh, i i want it to return one i want it to return four whatever i said happens yeah so that 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 was all about guards i think that's it that's it that is that's it um that's it for the functions part. Let's wrap this course up with strings and stuff. Right, strings. And I'm not gonna go deep into graphemes and stuff. Like binary things. Beginner friendly, remember? Strings are basically, if we concatenate it like this, we write strings in double quotes and when we have want to concatenate a variable, then we concatenate it like this. But remember that it will not be able to concatenate maps and stuff right only items and strings and numbers of course and then you can do some hit and trial for that right so this was string and of course we have string class or not class string module which will have will give us the length right string dot length length 10 right and uh strings are nothing but a sequence of bytes so we write string hello so it will return hello right but if you let me just copy it from the docs this is the representation of hello word in bytes i don't know what math is going here but i told you right um yeah so strings are bytes and there are graphemes and code points right uh, let's not get into the computer language stuff uh, don't want to confuse you and of course strings has uh, let's stick to the real world use cases right string dot uh, we have a lot of functions we can tab it and look into it right so first last and this slash one means one argument two means two arguments right a lot of functions so whatever module you want to use just go into the ix shell like this ix as mix right write the module's name string dot tab and it will spit out all the variables all the functions it has trim you have when if you're writing data structures in elixir then you can all this right and yeah i think that's it for the string don't want to complicate much right let's uh more than enough to for the real world scenario right and of course we as a developer deep dive into things if should the need arise otherwise it's just a waste of time right 
you know you should know the internal workings and stuff so that we have a lot of documentation and stuff and articles how beam works but if you set out to read books and books and books books you will never make projects understand what i'm saying don't get lost do not follow the lights <laughs> right now next is date and time we shall look at in the next one okay last and the least date and time um if you are writing some foreign exchange product in elixir or some uh, blockchain or crypto thing then this is the most important part date and time otherwise it's the least important part because postgres generates date and time on your own in your personal projects or your typical projects the time stamp you don't do not you don't generate actual generation the change set generation but anyway don't want to confuse you date and time so we have time and we have a lot of functions right and my favorite is utc in any language i love utc time so it's just spreading out time right um what else so we can just store it into this your day what t dot day t dot day sorry t dot hour t dot uh, calendar and minute right hour is hour what was the hour tenth hour okay and <clears throat> We have date. This was the time. We have date. Day dot UTC today. Right, two thousand twenty-four. Happy New Year, guys. January three. Right, this was date. And we can also create date like this. Date dot new, just like JavaScript, like new date. And we can create date of let's say let's go back in time, twenty fifteen. I guess 12 to 2 whatever. this is the new date we're back in time and you receive the time do 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 right working with time zones and all the stuff so this is the general idea you can explore and on and on with date and time I think that's it that's it I will record a closure video in the next one don't want to mix it up with the date time thing cool thanks